Welcome to Expound, our weekly worship and verse-by-verse study of the Bible. Our goal is to expand your knowledge of the truth of God as we explore the Word of God in a way that is interactive, enjoyable, and congregational. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones. for you. Hey, I, I just want... Okay, thank you. That was, that was great. Thank you. We don't have to see, like, the whole episode. Um, we have Dr. Stephen Collins with us tonight, archaeologist, theologian, and all-around smart person who wears, for the record, a real Indiana Jones hat. I want you to look at the hat for just a moment. This is like the real fedora. It even says on the side, Indiana Jones. So, um, I've always called him the real life Indiana Jones, but he's a biblical archeologist. Dr. Collins, what, what does that mean? What is a biblical archeologist? A biblical archeologist is somebody who does archeology span with the Bible in view hmm. to illuminate the text, give us the background of the Bible world. So, Indiana Jones, would, would he be considered a biblical archeologist? At least in one episode. Okay, okay, right. Okay, so um, wh- why, is, why is it? Because I know this is your passion, and you've done it in one particular spot, though you've done it for years in others, but uh, the city of Sodom. Wh- why is archaeology so important to Bible studies, biblical studies? Well, I think because the Bible has been quite maligned over the last, especially 50 years, So many scholars, Old Testament scholars, even New Testament scholars, have doubted the historical authenticity of the text. Mm. And when people hear that, of course, they're they're abandoning the Bible left and right. So many denominational churches, uh, people even in the Jewish community, the Christian community, are not taking the biblical text seriously as history. Because they, do they just begin with the supposition that it's all mythological, never really happened? Yeah, it might, it might have a moral, it might have some kind of a nice uh, analogy to our life, but as far as the stories being real, factual, no, myths and legends. Okay, so let's go to fact then for a moment. Is there, are, are there any significant archaeological discoveries that corroborate the story of the Bible? Yeah, lots of them. Uh, one that comes to mind, fairly recent one, scholars always said that, uh, so many of them, that King David was a myth. And of course, we had no, for a long time, we had absolutely no inscriptional material except what was in the Bible hmm. regarding the name of King David. But of course, you know, not too long ago, Avraham Biran in the excavations at Tel Dan discovered a, a stela. And it refers to... Explain what a stela is. Uh, a standing stone with a lot of writing on okay. it. Okay. Uh, you know, a road sign. Okay. <laughs> that actually has the phrase, the house of David. Hmm. And so David was sort of resurrected to the real world wow. by that. So, and, and today, Elat Mazar in the city of David is actually excavating what she believes to be the palace of King David. So King David's sort of been put back on the real stage of history. And of course, she comes from a long lineage of archaeolo- archaeologists in her exactly. family, right? Benjamin, Benjamin Mazar. Her. Benjamin Mazar and her cousin Ami Mazar. Okay, so um, uh, now to your dig, the city of Sodom, um, why would that be? You know, it's interesting. I introduced you as straight from the Temple of Doom. Um, you digging up Sodom, it really kind of is like the real life city of Doom, isn't it? Temple of Doom? Yeah, a lot of ash, a lot of destruction, yeah. And have you actually found ash? Oh, lots of it, half me- a meter of it over the, over the whole site, sort of on average. And uh, you only have to think about how, how much wood, how much organic material do you have to burn to get a meter of ash? A lot. So this is a, a huge destruction. Okay, I want to ask you a question pertaining to believers. Um, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is an Old Testament story. Of course, Christians believe it, but why is the archaeological discovery of the city of Sodom, why is that important to the Christian community? Well, most scholars thought Sodom didn't even exist, but to actually be able to take the biblical geography, read the text, go to the place the Bible says it should be, discover it, find it, and to boot, that it was destroyed in a manner 
as the Bible says it was destroyed, and we also have some evidence that it, it wasn't just any garden variety burning. This was a sort of a divine toasting from on high. And, you've, and you have evidence to that. Again, I just want to point that out. Did, haven't you found like glass scattered in different yeah, parts? Yeah, we have s some ceramics on the site, the surface of which is melted into glass at temperatures in excess of probably 8,000 degrees Celsius, okay. 10, 15,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so you've, you've written a book, and, and you've done a lot of things. You've, there's been a movie out from the National Geographic Channel, which I have seen. Um, uh, several agencies have come out uh, to see what you're doing, but your new book, Discovering the City of Sodom, by Simon & Schuster, so it's not just some little backroom publisher, it's like a major publisher. Your book is making waves in the academic community, right? Yeah, quite a bit. To say the least. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's going to be interesting this year when we go to some of the society meetings, the archaeological society meetings, see how this thing is reacting. And yet, r reputable scientific, um, the scientific community, archaeologists, they kind of, they look at your research, it's pretty impeccable. I mean, don't they respect the research you've given? How do they explain it? Yeah, we, we work really hard on making it scientific. All the P's and Q's have to be together across every uh, T dot, every I in our research. So we just have to make sure that you know, there's nothing askance, no, nothing that can be criticized. Uh, facts are facts. Right. So what, what is the unbelieving archaeologist saying about you and your team and what you've discovered? Here's what they usually say. Well, at least we think you've discovered literary Sodom. That is the pile of ruins that gave rise to the legend of the destruction of the city. Oh, really? Yeah, so, oh. I mean, that's as So they don't believe it ever get. existed, they just no. believe it. they believe that, that. That's the pile of ruins that gave rise to the story. Now, what I say is this. Listen, the city was destroyed. It's exactly where the Bible says it should be. You have to put that on your own believe -a meter <laughs> You know, if you don't believe in God, you gotta make it an etiological legend. If you do believe in God and you accept the historicity of the Bible, then everything fits into place perfectly. But that's where the evidence would point us. I would really not want to be in that other camp. Yeah. So uh, what, what is it, let me just ask you this purely as um, from a feeling, an emotional, what does it feel like to dig through the ruins of something you know was the city that had the stamp of God's judgment on it? What, what does that feel like to you? It's pretty awesome. And um, it can be pretty quiet, too, especially mm. when you discover some human remains associated with that destruction. Like skeletal remains? Yeah, because it's a, that sort of reality slapping you in the face. Like these are the people that this were judged. This really happened, and God's judgment was sure and swift. Now, to dig, or to dig, we talk about the evidence, to find this evidence is very slow and very methodical, and it's taken you how many years so far just to get where you've gotten? We're going into our ninth dig season, so we've been in the excavation now nine years, several years of research and exploration before and how, that. And how far down have you gotten? Or is that the, a fair question to ask? Because you do it in sections, I know. Yeah, in some places, three, four, five meters. Okay, wow. So 10, 15 feet in some places. And we haven't hit bedrock yet. Wow, so, so do you anticipate this going on how long? We have a contract with the Department of Antiquities through 2020. Wow. Then you'll Hindsight be, then is you'll be looking at a really old guy by then, you know. Yes, right. I won't even respond to that. But um, uh, to you, Dr. Collins, what is the most exciting discovery that you have encountered in the city of Sodom so far? Uh, when we first went to the site, it was pretty obvious. I had, it was the gate. The gate, Genesis 19.1 says, Lot sat in the gateway of Sodom. That was at the top of my list from day one. It took us seven years to find it. Wow. Yeah, seven seasons to find that gate. So we did find it. It's spectacular. And uh, so I have to put that on the top of the list. That was a very, very exciting day to have Lane Rittmeyer, one of the world's leading authorities on ancient architecture, to stand there lecturing our people from the dig uh, that this is the gateway of Sodom. And I was just listening and smiling. Wow. Okay, so there's an opportunity for people if they want to go. I mean, everybody wants to go to the Holy Land, and sometimes we forget that's part of the Holy Land. The other side of the Jordan River was part of the place where the tribe settled. And, right. and so uh, tell us a little bit about the opportunities people have to go. We need volunteers, Skip. Uh, we, we use 
volunteers from all over the world, just folks from everyday walks of life who decide they want to come and take a two-week vacation or three or four weeks or whatever they want to do, come and work with us on the excavation. And uh, we have some literature out here in the hallway where we're set up today uh, to guide folks in that direction. If you want to take a fabulous vacation and be part of helping prove the historicity of the Bible. Yeah, I would call that a vacation yeah. with a purpose. With a that, purpose. That'd, be, that'd be worth going and being a part of yeah. history. Exactly. exactly. So um, also you have your book out there as well, right? We have a display of your book. My book is out there. And, uh, and would you sign it for people? I will sign it. With your hat on? With my, I'll keep my hat on. Okay. And for a little extra, they can touch the hat. No. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, we'll have that. So tell us just a little bit uh, quickly, not only how people can get involved, because you did, but just I, it takes an enormous amount of money as well as just people going over there to dig because um, the amount of evidence and corroboration of the evidence that you find and writing things down and sending the information to universities, etc. What does a typical season cost? Just, I'm curious. Well, the first eight seasons cost us uh, aggregately amongst all the crew and all the staff cost us about $4 million to do that over eight years. Oh, wow. So it's, it's expensive. So one of the ways that this year we we're raising money is we're uh, raffling off a, uh, a two-week all-expense-paid uh, 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 trip for two. To Sodom. Well, they can, okay. they can go to Sodom and dig for four weeks, or Lane Rittmeyer and I will take them on a personal tour of Israel and Jordan for two weeks. Wow. Uh, all expense paid for two. Fabulous prize. That's great. And so that helps us raise money for the dig. You know, an all expense paid trip to Sodom would never have sold like 3,000 years ago, would it? Yeah, no. But today it would. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, St Dr. Collins, thank you so Thanks, much for Skip. being a part of this and for being with us.